Well, welcome, welcome. Thank you guys for joining. Um, tonight, before we start, um, I have everything planted out here. I'm following my first rule, which I have yet to follow until today, of assess your paintboard before going into miniatures, but we'll get to that later. But first are a few notes. One, I just want to thank everyone for taking the time to watch. Um, I know that there are plenty of streams that are just a little bit better quality, better cameras, better setup, um, and have music playing in the background, which I still have yet to figure out, but I will get to that, hopefully by next time. But I just want to say thank you for everyone who joins in, either live or goes back and watches. Um, it means a lot, and I hope you guys are having fun, because that's what this is all about. Um, we are going to make the new staple one and a half hours. Um, a lot of people drop off around that time, and that's plenty of time to be painting and talking. So we're gonna, uh, instead of float between one and a half and two hours, we're just gonna we're just gonna call it at one and a half hours from here on out. And hopefully, in the future, uh, we can do kind of what you guys want. Um, I've been just kind of going through subjects. So no one's really been uh, sending in too many questions. When they do send in questions, I um, kind of go over it. Tonight we're going to go over airbrushing, if you didn't see any of the messages in the chat. Uh, but hopefully in the future we can kind of focus on things that you guys want to see or paint along with. Um, I want to do kit bashing in the future. Um, but unless anyone says otherwise, I think we're just going to pick a mini and kind of continue on with it and then take breaks from it episode to episode. Uh, depending on what people want um, and I will be showing off kind of some updates from our miniature last week um, now tonight we're gonna be talking about airbrushing but what we're really gonna be focusing on as far as the skill uh, rather than going over a bunch of skills is only OSL, which is object source lighting. Um, a good way to think of it is like if a mage is holding a fireball in his hands and the light is shining off on his face or his robes, uh, that's OSL lighting for miniatures. And so we're going to kind of go over a little bit of that tonight, but in general, tonight is just going to be talking about what an airbrush kit is, uh, maintenance on the airbrush kit, um, kind of some tips and tricks for newbies, things that I wish I knew for, you know, my first few times sitting down with an airbrush, um, and just kind of how paints react when getting shot out through this tiny little nozzle. Um, but on OSL, if you guys want more of an in-depth look on it, how it looks, especially done by a professional, um, my favorite YouTube channels for miniature painting are Squigmar. He's a newbie like us, and he just kind of goes for it. He's gotten very good over the last two years. I suggest you look at Squigmar. Uh, my personal favorite is Megzuki. He's an amazing kit basher. He gave me all my inspiration for kit bashing models and making them your own in your own story. And then uh, probably tie for first place, um, maybe second, is Miniac. I, probably the most well-known out of the short list. Uh, he is, as everyone knows, the favorite man who eats paint for us. So those are three great channels that all have some OSL tips and videos that you can go and get more of an in-depth look, especially with a higher def camera, which we are, we sh we're missing tonight. We don't, I don't have the, the phone here with a really nice camera. So we're going to be kind of having just a little bit of a foggy video tonight. Um, Especially with my LED light, I don't. I think it's the cardboard box that I'm using for the um, the airbrush kit, which I need. I can't use the the regular green table. I think it's just the it's too reflective. So we're gonna kind of go in and out of that LED light fixture. Um, but yeah, thanks for joining tonight. Uh, and instead of doing our regular basket weaving class, we're just gonna be focusing on paint painting. So. Uh, let me show you kind of what we got going here. I have the camera. Oh. Sorry, I was kind of glitching on my side. Um, first of all, here is my little... Um, wow, that is super foggy. Here is my airbrush kit. Um, I have one of my favorite games, Twilight Imperium, next to it so that it won't uh, rattle away. When I turn it on, it kind of 
scutters away and it's kind of loud hopefully not too loud for the stream yeah, it shouldn't be too loud but I need that box there so that it doesn't fall off the table um, as always have my two cups of water and a little cup with just a tiny bit of water this is gonna be for uh, dumping any extra paint we have in the top mixer pot here uh, that we don't want anymore um, I want to make sure that I dump that into a cup with a little bit of water, not just dry so it doesn't just cake the bottom of that cup. But tonight, what we're going to be painting after I kind of go over the updates on my model here is um, some Blackstone Fortress models. So I've gotten Blackstone Fortress recently, been really liking the rules, haven't yet gotten to play a game, but hopefully I can have a mini, mini or two painted before then. Um, I kind of have the paint lineup for what we're going to be doing on this guy tonight. And if we get to it with the um, Eldari unit over there, and some paints that are going to be shared between the two. Um, going to be kind of talking about what minis you would airbrush and what minis you probably wouldn't airbrush. And then kind of some paints that I want to go over before starting. But yeah, that is, oh, I said I would share this little LED setup. As you can see, back in the shop here, right next to the garage door is where we've been streaming lately. But uh, I got this off of Patrick, who was working here for a bit, helping us with some of the laser printer that you saw Jordan work on the yesterday and the day before. It's got this little rail system. You can go back and forth and uh, LED that turns on and off and that is what I've been using lately really awesome for at least in person work uh, that has proven to be a little bit tricky to pick up on the cameras but nevertheless that is what I've been using it's been it's been a save so I'm gonna put this down even though this camera looks a little bit better than the one up top I will address that as the stream goes on see if I need to switch that out but nevertheless let's let's kind of start so first off um, I'm gonna be kind of going over the minis um, and the paints before the airbrush um, and then as I'm going over the airbrush I'm gonna be kind of using it hopefully so that we don't waste too much time on just talking but first before that is to kind of go over the mini we worked off last time um, we used kind of going in and out of focus there uh, we used uh, the green special wash from Games Workshop to go with the Night Haunt. And I uh, I liked it all right. I left a little bit on the arm there and the hand, um, but I, I went back and dry brushed with a nice mixture of Celestra gray and some blue. I think it was Ulthrun. I, I can't pronounce. I can't think of the name. Essentially, an offshoot of rust gray. Uh, kind of get that back up. Left some green underneath, especially on the arm here. You can probably see that through the camera. I liked the glowing effect on the green, but we're going to go back and add some of the thicker blue wash and then go back with a gray, kind of dark blue and white dry brush to build that back up. But I uh, painted his sword and got his robes. Um, that is something that I did want to show actually about edge highlighting that was in the the chat, the Game Grid chat the other day. And I did a little bit of that on his robes. Let's see if I can, uh, you know what? I don't think that's gonna, you can kind of see on his his right arm the one holding the sword on the tassels there. I haven't finished. I'm still going to build up with probably um, a corn red and then maybe touch up with some bright red mixed with a brown. That's kind of what I did here is a corn red mixed with brown paint to kind of get those that... Um, wow, I can't think of the paint color, but that kind of red on the tassels there. You can't see it too much on his back, um, but all of that is done with edge highlighting. And there was a great video posted in the chat 
um, but essentially just to kind of go over a little bit it's a small explanation of how edge highlighting works is you are not using the tip of your brush you are using the edge so it's essentially going to be a T angle so if I'm getting the sword we're going on the side of my brush not the tip of my brush and we're going back across it and that's going to get a finer detail than you could ever get with the tip of a brush unless you're crazy talented or using a toothpick which again toothpicks are surprisingly really good at doing detail work so yeah just wanted to show off a little bit of what I progressed the model in. I hopefully want to finish that model with you guys at some point. Um, but let's move on to these guys. So, I think I'm going to turn this off. I can't decide. There are pros and cons to having both lights on and off. Okay, so why I picked these two models. Yeah, let's see, we're gonna, even though there's quite the glare, detail comes up more when we have the light on, so we're just gonna have to bear with it for now. Um, why I picked these two models, and I did a very, very light dusting of um, a prime paint there, so you can see a lot of red of the plastic underneath, is mo two reasons. One, most of these models most of these two models is going to be kind of one color. Uh, the robot, I'm going, to, I'm going to paint them the way that they're supposed to be painted from Blackstone Fortress. Uh, the robot is kind of, I would equate it to a Space Wolves blue, maybe a little bit lighter. And this is an Eldari unit ranger from Bieltan, which is kind of a cream white with green armor plates and so most of her cloak, her armor pieces are going to be that cream white color. He's going to be mostly blue. And that is where our airbrush comes in. Um, to get a very thin but covering coat of colors. And I want to show just how easy that is. Um, some, sometimes, like I said, you probably don't want to use an airbrush on some models that have a lot of either detail like it small detail forgive me um or a lot of different items that are different colors uh the two examples that i have uh also from blackstone fortress is this crute um he just has I, c I could probably still use an airbrush for a lot of him uh to get his head um this cape but most of the details are going to be a little too finite for an airbrush or just you could do with an airbrush but at least my skill level and also my skill level isn't high enough and as well as I feel more comfortable getting in there with a fine brush and getting some nice clean edges instead of maybe some misting coming off on a different part of the gun when I only want that little guy most of this is going to be fine detail work so I would not have an airbrush with this guy with with this miniature there's just so much going on and i want the spikes to be different i want the cloth to be different the cloth the gun the hilt the cape the belt the pouch different colors on his armor plates he's supposed to be this nice you know gentleman's adventurer so i want different gold and bronze and silvers and just most of this model is going to be detail work uh, so a prime is good enough for me and I won't be using any airbrush on something like this um, two models that I actually would use an airbrush is something like this guy he I'm so sorry about the video quality I don't know exactly how to fix that I'll look into that probably during break time but uh got this big cape um most everything is either one piece or not too many pieces put together and the paint scheme is pretty dark metallic-y um kind of some royal colors i'd feel pretty comfortable using an airbrush on him 
on this guy, even though he's got a lot of details, um, not only the artwork for him, but also what I've envisioned for him, um, is pretty much, you know, three to five colors, base colors, and I'm excited to use an airbrush for some fire that is on this model. So, in essence, airbrushing is awesome. It, you get some amazing mixes of colors, some blending, um, but in general, the larger the model, obviously the easier it is to work with, the smaller, the harder. Um, especially if you're working with um, fine cast Citadel models, um, they tend to have more intricate details um, and I just don't want to clog up any of the area with extra layers of paint, unnecessary layers of paint. So I choose when and where to use my airbrush kit and admittedly I don't use it enough and I should because I have one. Um, but on that note, if any of you are interested in trying an airbrush, um, I know at some point Game Grid wants to rent out some sessions to use theirs. Uh, that's not an option at the moment, but it is underway. And I personally would feel comfortable um, blending mine out. Um, if you're interested, just uh, catch me on Discord or come into the shop and we can talk about that. But yeah, let's get into kind of the paints that I have here. Um, first off, uh, the paints are going to be going on your model a lot differently when going through an airbrush. An airbrush, if you don't know, I, sorry if this is somehow patronizing for some people who are already in the know or have some experience, but I'm going off the assumption that some of you have n never used an airbrush before. So with airbrushes, and we're probably going to, let's see if we can turn this off and get that, nope. There is a very, very fine point needle inside this airbrush. It barely pokes out here. It goes through the mechanism, and this is um, it right here. And when you pull this lever on top, it pulls the needle back and allows paint to come through. When you push down on this lever, it allows air to go through. So you can without pulling the needle back just let air through and or let air and paint through um, while we're talking about that a really good tip that i learned uh, far into me using an airbrush which i learned before is um, a way to keep airbrushes are infamous for clogging up especially if you're uh, spending a lot of time in between um, sessions of using it you know more than 30 seconds um, a good way to kind of stop the clogging is when you're pushed down and pulled back so letting air and paint through um, me and a lot of other people you know you either just let go um, or kind of do like a, a diagonal release which lets paint come through the tip of the nozzle uh, almost all the way to the end and that can let paint dry up here and make it so that no more paint is going through and then you have to you know stop the whole process wash it down um, get very fine brush um, some soft bristles and clean out the paint because you don't want to bend the tip there something nice that i learned is keep the button pushed down so air is always exiting your airbrush but push the the lever forward so that no more paint is flowing through your airbrush and then lift up to let the air stop flowing through. What this does is it stops the paint going but air is still go flowing so it's pushing kind of all the recessed paint that you might have and then it keep, you know, keeps it from clogging. Um, another thing is no matter what, always, always try to keep uh, paint from settling and drying at the bottom of your airbrush in there where you can see the needle um, 
you don't want that to get clogged at all. Uh, the worst thing you could do is have paint travel back in to your airbrush system. Um, and then that way, you know, if that happens, you have to take apart the whole thing, wash it out, um, because if you don't take care of that, just the longer it goes, the more that's going to collect and build up, and you're going to ruin your paintbrush if it just kind of gets past repair. Now, that is a lot of doomsday speak there. Don't be too worried. It's not that hard. I can do it, which, as I always say, I never claim to be a master, just someone with a camera who is talking to you now. So, um, with that, how paints react differently when they go through? Um, shades. When you put shades through an airbrush, it's um, essentially the high power of you know, it being blasted through this nozzle, and also it's, it's so finite, it's not coming off these big you know, globs or you know, normal sized globs off of your brush is especially with watches it's gonna kind of separate what's in the pot um, those alcohols and the paints and all the other substances um, and something to know is that even with washes where you usually don't water them down or don't water them down that much uh, you will need to do so in a paint in an airbrush um, you will get a spider webbing effect if you don't do so and it it's just it's going to come off more inky than a wash when you put it onto your model um, so you really will need to water your um, your sh washes your shades down um, and especially your paints now when I say water down water is okay and fine um, I definitely always you know to avoid expenses and un unnecessary costs, I always water down my paints when I'm using a paintbrush, but with my airbrush, um, I will not use water. I will use um, either some air thinner, this is air cast thinner from Citadel, um, even Lama Medium, Lamian, Lamian Medium works well. Um, I've tested both that's there's pros and cons to both um i kind of use them interchangeably depending on what i'm using or what type of paint i'm using if it's a base a layer a wash um i don't these are just a little you know what's in them better lubricates and flows out through the airbrush than kind of water and just kind of things that you could get in water just little uh sediments and particles um, now, with that, just quick thing someone asked um, about uh, what is the purpose of Arter Coat. And a lot of people know the purpose of Lama Medium, um, but there is also a hidden purpose in Lama Medium. A way to think about these two paints is, wow, that is awful. Um, let's see. Come on. The difference between these two paints is they're kind of opposites. They counteract each other. Arter Coat uh, puts a sheen on things, a little bit of a gloss. Uh, it is also good for covering your model in a protective layer. Uh, if you're going to use it for that, uh, make sure to do so sparingly. Maybe even uh, lightly water down your Arter Coat to put over your model. Um, if you ever go too far with an Arter Coat and you find that, you know, your robes look like they're wet or just simply that they're, you know, glossy and covered in Arter Coat and no longer have the illusion of being a character, uh, that's what Llama Medium is used for. Llama Medium takes off that sheen and that gloss coat of Arter Coat. Um, and so if you use these together, you can actually uh, put a nice shell coat protective layer over all your army uh, by going Arter Coat, then Lama Medium, and then if you need a little bit more Arter Coat, and then a lot more Arter Lama Medium. Um, I know that there's a mini that I used where I didn't really understand how much Arter Coat to put on, and I, I, I just kind of globbed it on. It was thick. And I used probably five different layers of the llama medium and it still didn't seem to make a dent and I ended up having to scrape off just a little bit and it worked just fine. Uh, however, I learned later that 
I could have just kept on going with the Lamian medium and um, gotten it to look fine. So if you ever feel like you go too far with Articoat and you don't know what to do, this is the paint to use. Um, now we don't have these at our shop. Uh, I hope to get them soon, but some technical paints that I was asked about uh, this week, um, they have, to my knowledge, four different colors. They have yellow, red, a blue, and a green. Um, these are like Arter Coat, where they're gonna leave a shell and a gloss, uh, but these two keep the transparency, and when you put it on, uh, they're, they're made for Eldari units for gems so that it looks like there's a ruby or a sapphire or an emerald on you know their gun hilt or uh, so these are really cool paints if you can pick them up somewhere I hope that we can get these into games workshop sorry not <laughs> into game grid sometime soon uh, last week we talked about using uh, when you're assessing your paints and if it's not in your budget or if not your time or if you can't find a paint that you need a specific type of paint about kind of uh, exchanging paint colors that are alike and the concerns that come with that and also how it, it, it can be fine it actually it can turn out just fine so for this Eldar unit I'm using the colors that Games Workshop uses and suggests of a warp storm Warp Stone Glow, and then Recess Shading with BL Tan Green, and then Edge Highlighting with Moot Green. Now, if you couldn't find a Warp Stone Glow, um, so something that I had on hand, I didn't have Warp Stone Glow, but I had a Cabalite Green. It is a much darker green, um, however, I could make it work. Uh, by either mixing in a little bit of moot green with my Cabalite green or really just using it out of the pot, uh, not mixing it with another color. Um, they are alike, they're not very close, but as always, the model should look good for you. If you like the way it looks, if you think it looks fine, then that's great, it's your model. Um, you shouldn't have to feel like your model needs to look like it does on the box work um, perfectly and match it up 100%. Those are artists, you know, the Evy Metal team, uh, they've been painting for years. Uh, they have a very specific way that they paint. Um, and if you go on YouTube or on the internet, you know, Google Images, and you type in, you know, a certain either Warhammer Faction or d d model or anything, you'll find that people paint models very differently with different colors, and that's fine. And it should be fine for you, too. So always remember that. If you feel like you want your paint colors to be a little bit differently, or if you're using color that's just a little off shade or off hue, that's fine as long as it's fine with you. So I just want to go over that just a little bit, because I didn't show that okay so let's kind of get into it though uh, i'm going to check the comments real quick just in case awesome okay so uh, like i said we're going to paint her second if we have time so i'm put her to the side and we're going to go for our friendo here and I'm going to kind of give you the lineup of what we're planning on doing. Um, we're going to first go with a rust gray for his blue armor. We're going to go a little bit darker. And then we're going to lightly dust and layer on some Celestra gray and possibly some Temple Guard blue. Uh, with Temple Guard blue, I definitely will be... Uh, toning it down a little bit with Celestial Gray, but you'll see with an airbrush just how nice it is to use a color strip in the pot without mixing too much if you don't want to. Um, the great thing about airbrushes is it comes out so fine, especially with uh, 
the settings that you put your airbrush to of you know how much pressure it, of how much air pressure is flowing through the hose into your brush and also how far back are you pulling on that you know the paint lever here how much paint are you letting out um, using a temple guard blue which is quite bright and is quite the contrast from this rust gray uh, I can feel pretty confident in still uh, spraying it on because it's gonna coat on very slowly and pretty uh, wide and broad across the model so it's gonna mix nice with the colors that I have underneath um, you don't have to worry too much about, you know, with the, with a paintbrush, if I put Temple Guard Blue on my model, all of a sudden, you know, when I put the brush stroke down, that shoulder pad is Temple Guard Blue. That's just, you know, that's the color it is now. Uh, but with an airbrush, it kind of does this magical mixing and blending for you because it's just it's getting coated on so lightly and almost transparently for the colors underneath and instead of talking about it we'll just show you in here in a little bit so after those we're i'm going to show just a little bit of osl lighting for uh, he's got some lights and his visor around this model and i want to show kind of along the lines of what I just talked about with Temple Guard Blue, uh, how cool it can look with putting a red light dusting around a certain area, making it look like, you know, the glow of his visor is kind of emanating and casting some light around his surrounding armor. And then I'll go a little bit lighter, well, not a little bit, look quite uh, red-orange, quite brighter red to kind of build up that um, effect that we're going for, the illusion. So, let's get to it. Let's see. Again, sorry if the airbrush is too loud. Please let me know in the comments if you can't hear me. Uh, we, I will find a way at that moment, not after tonight, to mend that. I want to make sure that you guys aren't just hearing the engine noise, you know. But yeah, let's get into mixing. So, um, with, so there's loud music. I'll turn off the microphone real quick. Um, with mixing the color that you need for airbrushing, um, you're going to be watering it down quite significantly, way more than you would uh, with using a paintbrush. Uh, one to one ratio, maybe, maybe even a little bit more of your uh, paint thinner. Just definitely depending on uh, the type of brush you're using, how big the nozzle is, um, what the effect you're going for, how much paint you're looking to put on, for example, I, I want to base this whole mini in rust gray. So I am, I'm going to water it down or thin it down significantly more than a brush, but not as much as I would say the red for later, because I want that to go on even thinner than my base coat. But it's going to be kind of hard to show uh, me. Yeah, there's just no way for me to hold it here and you know, so far away from my body, put it in. So I'm going to do it off camera and then I'll kind of show you what I'm doing. So first we're going to put in another trick I learned is first you put in a little bit of thinner, maybe not all the thinner that you're going to use, but a little bit so that the paint doesn't automatically, you know, stick and adhere to the side of your spray pot. So just a little bit here. So the, the paint that you're using has and yeah, I spilt, don't worry, um, just so it has a little bit to mix with already. Um, I'm going to shake this paint pot, and then we're not going to plop it in there. I'm actually going to use a paintbrush to get the amount that I want, and then put it in there. Um, one of the reasons that I don't use 
a paintbrush all that often is it's quite a setup for me, especially when I, I'm not painting for, you know, more than an hour, two hours a day. Um, but I definitely um, use the paintbrush when I'm kind of batch painting my minis or when I'm... Um, needing these on a larger model. If you guys have saw my uh, Great Nights, Dread Night, um, at the front counter over the past few months, I took it home at now, but um, that whole mini, except for some detail work, was done with an airbrush because uh, it's a larger model. Uh, it got done a lot quicker with an airbrush but also with the time that I needed, the time that was required to get the whole mini done, um, I felt comfortable setting up my paint, my airbrush kit. So the reason why I'm using a cardboard box is because you know, I, I just can't masterfully control where all this paint is going. Um, I don't want it to even lightly get on anything, you know, on the table or have it, you know, float somewhere else. And even if it's minuscule, I, I you know, I want to just be careful, clean, keep it inside this box. Um, it's going to stick to the size of this cardboard box. Um, there is a myth that you need this high quality gas mask for when you're airbrushing, uh, just like you are when you're going to prime. Uh, that's not true. I'm not saying don't use a mask because you should, like I am now. But um, you don't need a big mask. The, the, the chemicals that are coming off aren't going to be as harmful as a prime can. So don't be dissuaded by not having a high quality mask. Um, using a normal mask um, it should, should be just fine for you. But yeah, we're going to start this up. I'm going to jiggle around the table a little bit. That's why Twilight Imperium is there. And then I'm going to turn this on. Okay, so I always test it first on the cardboard to see kind of what I'm working with. And even if the light wasn't shining, that is my blue. Um, and it's not the video quality. It that's that's what I'm seeing too. It's very light dusting. So yeah, let's go. I should be using a glove. I forgot about that. But nevertheless, so we're just gonna go on, go back and forth, and it's really just barely putting in anything on this model. Just a slow process. The nice thing I like about it is it's so slow that if you can see that you're kind of making some mistakes or it's not going the way that you liked, you can kind of back off and reassess. Well, something just happened with the computer. My headset turn off. Let's see. It says it's not registering noise. Let's see. I'm gonna. Well, that was unfortunate. I'm gonna have to clean out my airbrush with how much time is passing. But I guess we'll take a break right now. Sorry about that, guys. Um, I'm going to figure this out if you can hear me. I also need to clean out my airbrush now. Looks like it's leaking. Okay, two things while I was gone. Hopefully you can still hear me. Um, no one responded to my comment in the chat. Um, but, yes, I did. <laughs> I was looking at my phone and had my... Uh, airbrush tip over so I spill a lot but um, one way to test if you have a leak is to um, 
put just a tiny, tiny bit of an alcohol-based paint. Um, I just used the paint that I was using and a little bit of, uh, a little more uh, lemon medium mixed in and then to push it through and you can see the bubbles coming out there. Um, so I have a leak so whenever I'm spray painting some of that paint is coming out and then it clogs up from the outside especially when I have a down facing angle like this and after a few seconds I am rendered useless. So um, unless I can figure that out with going back on a break, um, it looks like this might not be usable for tonight, which is fine. We will paint by hand something else. But before I go on break, I did want to show just um, a nice another nice thing about cardboard is you can spray and just spray, 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 and see, you know, even if you have clean water going through your airbrush, um, there might be some paint at the bottom or somewhere in the nozzle here. And then you just push it through and see uh, if there's any, you know, if it's clean water or if there's got a little bit of hue or intent to it. Um, so if you're ever using that, um, don't stop airbrushing or to put your airbrush away until you run some hot water through it and make sure that all the paint is out you know you can't just judge to see if your airbrush is clean by looking inside here you have to clean out everything in there so before you put your airbrush away make sure to run some hot water through it and spray it out on some paper or cardboard and see if there's any you know hue ink whatever you want to call it still coming through you want clean water clean clean water so yeah, um, before I go, actually, hopefully this will show up. Yeah, there you go. Look, um, just a nice, nice thin dusting of that blue. Um, actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use. This is mostly water, so I can wait just a few more seconds. But I'm gonna use that nice camera because it seems to have a little bit better streaming quality and show. Oh, come on. Yeah. Um, why are you not focusing? Come on. Come on, come on, come on, please. Almost. Almost. Well, if it focuses, it focuses. But you can see that there's... It's all the same blue, but it's gonna... Here. But it transitions to black all around the model it's you know the blue color then a little less blue little less blue more black and then it's just this nice nice blending of the blue and the black and that's going to be how it is for all the colors that you use when you put uh, another color lightly down on the base color of your model it's just going to naturally because the particles are so finite you know your eyes are going to mix it for you um and that is the beautiful thing about airbrushing. Um, admittedly, this is one of my least favorite parts of airbrushing, is the cleanup and the fine tuning. And half of that is, in my opinion, airbrushing. And the other half is user error. So we'll be back in a little bit. All right, we're back to give you a little insight of what we're dealing with or I'm dealing with is the nozzle is loose and uh, when I went to tighten it it went past um, past the point it should so it looks like I have an o-ring or the rubber ring problem I think that it's probably worn down or broken so I'm gonna have to replace that but nevertheless we will continue tonight I'm sorry that that happened. Uh, I haven't used my airbrush kit in a few months, so should have done a little maintenance before opening up tonight. But hopefully we got some questions answered and kind of got the general idea down. I got to use it just a little bit to kind of see, but again, uh, there are some great channels out there that you can see um, the airbrush applied 
um, at greater lengths. But so we're just going to continue on tonight with our little night hunt friend here. A um, little underprepared. Uh, have most of the paints, if not all the paints that I need. Um, but we're, yeah, we're going to go just a little further, hopefully on his cape. Uh, we're not going to go probably any more edge highlighting tonight. I don't have the browns that I need. Um, and I definitely want to match correctly. So I'm not going to wing the browns tonight. Uh, but something I do want to show tonight is a really cool um, rusting technique for uh, metals and whatnot. And, oh, that is not the right color, but I do have it over there. Um, give me one moment. There we go. Not skink blue dry brush, but rather, um, let's put this back in. Uh, I don't know how to say that. Uh, Nil Nihilock Oxide and Fire Dragon Bright or really any other orange um, but a bright orange is what you want not just a base orange um, you can use these two along with uh, another technical paint from Games Workshop which is Typhus Corrosion uh, I talked about that last time it's it's the kind of light paint with a lot of fine uh, sawdust and other materials in it to kind of make it look clumpy and whatnot um, that's a great addition to making something look rusted. But we're just going to add a little bit of this technical paint and some bright orange to kind of make some rusted spots. We're going to do that on his sword and hopefully his face mask, which we're going to go for first. Um, as always, two cups of water, never just one. And... Don't waste materials. I still got half of a good uh, paint pad here. We're just going to continue on with that. Um, still don't have my wet palette. I will bring that next time. Didn't even need it for tonight. I thought with the airbrush kit. But yeah, let's go for it. So we got our metallic paints here. Uh, we're going to use the mask. Um, we're not, we're not going to be using the screen again tonight. Hopefully get to touching up his ghosty wisps with the night haunt gloom and some uh, Drac Dracanoff nightshade um, and then maybe dry brush with celestial gray but first we're going to focus on those metallic um, areas doing some rusting so first let's what we're going to do is we're going to base coat with our bronze color here. And then we're going to go over with a layer of um, some of the lead belcher and then do some edge highlighting. Um, or maybe just I might dry brush on Rune Fang still. We'll see. And then we'll go for the effects. So let's see. So we're just going to be putting it down nice on our mini. Um, since the area of his helmet here is so small, I'm just going to use a nice medium-sized layer brush, um, not the flat brim, because uh, I do want to be able to kind of only go one to two swaths here, have enough paint backed up into my brush. So, as always, shake your pot, get some paint out, put it down, and let's thin it down with some water. Not too much. Make sure to dab out the water as always to make sure you don't have too much going into your little paint spot here. It's always annoying for me when I add too much water then I have to go back and add more paint and the more paint than I want to go on my mini and then I end up just wasting all, all sorts of paints and different amounts so we're looking for that consistency looking for no bubbles it's looking good we don't want it to raise up on the edges when we twist out our brush 
just a barely barely have lip on hopefully only one side if it is on two sides very thin we don't want it to have too much you know geometrical <laughs> rifts and valleys we want it to be pretty smooth we're just going to put it down on this guy we haven't even given this guy a name yet we need to give this guy a name he is an HQ unit choice for Games Workshops Age of Sigmar but he doesn't have a name to think of a good name to give him what do you guys think I always I already forgot the name you gave the cave troll it was like Francis or something we need to get back to Francis at some point probably feeling lonely not being finished model yet which again me not following my painting rules of remember finished not perfect we're looking for finished minis something that you can look back at and be proud of simply because it's finished not because it's perfect plus the more finished minis you get done, the more you learn. We're looking for experience. Something that I unfairly did to myself at the beginning of painting and also continue to do to myself is... I lost my train of thought. <laughs> is I feel like I need a mini to be perfect and if I feel like it's not going well I abandon it halfway and that's not how we learn we learn whether it's painting minis shooting hoops your job friendships relationships anything it's about continuing through and finishing something not expecting perfection You learn a lot by finishing something. It's with the process. And also just making yourself commit, commit to something all the way through. And I don't know if you can see that on the camera. I'm not even on the bare edges of the camera. You can kind of see, might be hard. But I got some of that brown paint on this guy's, this guy's helmet. And that's fine. It's showing through now. But that's what the two thin coats are for. And if not two thin coats, then another coat. What are you guys doing tonight? You painting? Playing games, cooking dinner. What has tonight got going for you all? Man, I love painting. I often, while streaming these past two ish months, I always find moments when I'm just so absorbed in my painting and not talking. I just find painting so relaxing. If you're not having fun while doing something, unless it's important, don't know why you're doing it. Let it be rewarding, even if it's not perfect. So, in our Discord tonight, we had someone ask about his paintbrushes. 
it seemed to be falling apart a little bit. And someone else uh, wrote back to him appropriately the answer that he's probably letting too much moisture and paint get back into, I forget the technical term for this metal part, where underneath the glue and the bristles are connected. But uh, it loosens up the glue, uh, let, and then, you know, when one bristle leaves, there is more space for wiggle room, and it makes it easier for this second bristle to leave, and then easier for the third, and so on and so forth. It's just kind of a downhill battle from there. Um, so it's kind of hard not to clean your paintbrushes without getting some moisture up there, especially when you're me and you're just, you know, dipping down into six inches of water and just beating the crap out of your brush. Um, however, I have still had my brushes last me for quite some time, and that's from a trick I learned, and I've mentioned this a few times, of just having your brushes dry downwards um, using either sticky tack on your lamp or something, just having your brushes dry just downwards helps a lot. And also avoid, like this brush, getting paints sticking just at the bottom of the bristles to the metal uh, holding part. You don't want that. Let's see. Okay. See, we're gonna go for our second coat here, and the wonders of a wet palette are that you would still have this paint here to use. I want to be dried up like mine is. I really need to bring my wet palette. I just keep it at home because I paint it at home, and I always forget to bring it. Um, I keep on saying I'm gonna show you how a wet palette works. I can tell you about it right now, uh, but also you can just do a quick Google search and you'll see what I'm doing. Um, the whole purpose is to use a material, uh, usually wax paper, that is um, a material where moisture can still flow through it, but very minusculely. So it's not going to uh, you get the paper towel underneath this wax paper inside of a sandwich. Um, wow. Words so hard. I can't, I can't think of it. Those containers that carry your sandwich, they're square. Tupperware, there we go. And um, you get the napkin underneath the wax paper moist so that it transfers moisture up through the wax paper very minusculely, very slowly, to keep your paints wet and usable, but not diluting your paints to where, you know, once you come back to it after an hour, um, you know, they're, they're too runny and you can't use them. Um, and I can say from experience that, um, am I too far off the camera? I'm sorry. I can say from experience that I've had paint last a whole week in there. Uh, when you put the lid back on, uh, you can really get a run for your money. Um, that's the opposite, isn't it? Isn't the same the other way around? But biggest bang for your buck, there you go, for the paint. Um, you get to use almost all of it, really. And with all the paint I've wasted over the years, I could have been saving it with using a wet palette, which I've only been using for two years, really. Um, so normally, I'd really want... Here, I need to switch my computer so I know exactly what I'm looking at here. Um, normally I would want to have a little bit more time in between putting on a layer to my guy's helmet. Um, definitely would be the case with 
uh, his robe, his cape. Um, when I'm edge highlighting, I, I don't want it to ruin the layer underneath or for it to mix so much to where I'm not getting these nice consistent lines of edge, edge highlighting and I'm getting these kind of, you know, different transitions between the red and the brown. Um, I definitely would want that to settle and dry. But especially when I'm working with a model like this where I want that face mask to not be that bright bronze gold and I want to mostly be my second layer and I'm okay with the two colors mixing and as well as since this isn't some you know plaid in armor shiny brand new knight this is an old you know decrypted ghost model and we're gonna put the rusting oxide marks on him anyways I'm just gonna go for it right now I think the result is going to be pretty nice. So for this, I'm going to be watering down my lead belcher, which is already a thick paint, more so than you would if you're putting it down as your base color or if you're painting chains or something. So I want just a little bit more transparency between this paint and the paint underneath. We also, I have yet to do my second coat on the sword. And so we're going to add just a little bit more paint here. So we get a lot more water. And as I said in the past, um, if you water your paints down too much, uh, and you can tell... If that's so, because of two things, one, you're going to get a lot of bubbles on your paint map, and as well as uh, you'll notice that the paint retracts and doesn't stick to a surface, um, and it comes back together. Uh, that's when you know you have too much water. That's not how watered down we want this paint, but there's still, there's still some girth to this paint. I want to water it down a little bit more. Not too watered down. I don't want it to make a wash, which I have tested before, and metallic washes aren't as viable as it sounds. So we're going to go for this. There we go. I wonder if that's showing up on the camera. Changing the color to this lead belcher, but where the paint is dragging away from the edges and going back to the mass of where most of the paint is, uh, we're leaving some of that bronze behind, which is exactly what we want. I'm also not gonna get the very edges of maybe these tipped corners around his mask and leaving that completely bare of my lead belcher. There we go. We also don't want too much paint on the brush. Because even though our paint is watered down, we want to control some of that um, application simply by how much paint we're actually putting down on the model. So here, let's see if I can. Well, I'm gonna I'm not gonna waste paint. I'm gonna show after I use this whole brush worth of paint. Let's see. If you ever get pools of paint with watered down paint, luckily it's a lot easier to spread it out. You just go before the pool. Not You don't dip at the pool, you dip uh, after or before it and then you pull through and then you will get a smooth transition out and you'll kind of fix that problem if you run into that there we go just lightly lightly okay 
I'm gonna wash out this brush in my metallic water cup so as not to ruin the other paints that I put in the other one. Okay, let's switch over to the camera that supposedly has better um, quality and see if I can show you. All right. Let's see, that is not focusing. I just want you to focus not on the green but on the model that would be great hmm you can kind of you can kind of get a crude image there of ah, of the gold underneath that silver it is just awful quality let's see come on work with me Well, see, it's okay. If I try bringing it in. Oh, come on. But that. Oh, 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 I found the secret. Look at that. Okay. So, all of that gold speckling in there is exactly what we're going for. And at least at my skill level, there's no way I could get that by doing it the opposite way of putting down lead belcher and then, you know, attacking it with little bits of the bronze. Um, it's a lot easier just to go in with a translucent, sorry, not translucent, a watered down version of the paint you're going for. And still getting that underneath color. That's exactly what we're going for. Okay, well now that I know, I just have to get unearthly close to my model. Here, now I can show kind of the edge highlighting. I mean, barely. You can barely see it. Admittedly, I'm like a third of the way done with the edge highlighting. Still have to go back in. But the whole point is you're just getting the very tips of... Oh, look, I messed up down there. Lots of tune-ups for later but you're leaving that color underneath and the point of the edge highlight is not to change the color or to be more um, abrasive or uh, eye grabbing than the color underneath. It's more to accent the color underneath and to add you know, layers of illusion to make it look like it's you know, more real than it is plastic. So let's go in and add some of this cool rusting effect I was talking about. And then at the end, we'll tune up with some uh, rune fang steel. So I have four minutes to do this. I'll probably go a little bit after 8.30. And honestly, this won't take too long at all. And we don't need that much paint. So we're just going to get a little bit... And water it down. I have to water this down a little bit more than usual. I always say that. I always tell you guys I'm going to water it down just a little bit more than usual, which makes it the usual thing that I do. But I swear, that's just the colors and the techniques that I've been doing for the past little while. Don't water your paints down more than you need to. Now the oxide is already a thinner paint. Um, I have just gone straight from the pot onto my mini before without watering it down. And it works pretty good. Um, so I'm barely gonna thin this down. Just a little bit. There we go. Just a tiny bit more. Twist it out. Okay. So there's not really a right or wrong. That orange looks like gold with the light on. There you go. There you can kind of see a little better the contrast. I might keep the light off for this part to see if it makes a difference. Um, it doesn't really matter the order you go in. Um, 
or maybe it does, but I haven't perfected that yet. I go orange first, and then the blue, because the orange is such a different color than the the metallics, and the blue kind of blends in just a little bit better, that I feel it's better to have more of the oxide than is your orange color. So I'm going to kind of dance around some of these holes that they had pre-crafted into the mini. I'm not going to do all of them. This is one of those instances where less is a lot of time more. We're not looking to make this some zombie or Nurgle unit. We're, we're just looking to make this sword look a little more ancient and decrepit. So we're just splotching down and I am off screen per usual. So hard to paint. You can use your finger to uh, get some overdone spots out of the way. But what I was saying, it's so hard to paint, you know, this far away from my body. Usually, you know, the model's a foot away, four inches away from my face. Not this foot and a half, two foot deal. So we're also, I haven't finished his hilt, so we're going to add the resting on his hilt later. Because that hilt is very bright. We need to tone that down a little bit with some bronze and lead belcher. So we're just going to do the sword real quick get into this oxide and we want to be very judicious with how much we're putting down there you go and you don't always have to uh, put the orange and the blue in the same spots uh, you can have them kind of sparse between each other uh, let's see, we're just going to lightly put it down. And luckily, the blue kind of hides a little bit of the orange, which is perfect. Kind of have some of this blue pool just a little bit inside the hole. I use my nail to kind of take off some excess that I don't want. Put a lot more up here. Yeah. Try to take away a little bit in the middle. Not just have like it's blue next to orange. Maybe some layers of blue and orange interlaying. I dried it pretty quick. Got a little bit more water. There we go. We're going to leave pretty much more orange on these spots. Pretty faded orange spot on this side of the sword, so we're going to have a kind of faded blue spot, not as strong. And that was too much blue, so I'm going to use my finger. There we go. Alright. Definitely go back and erase layers, put on more layers. But for now, let's see how this turned out. Let's see if I need to turn on the light or not. Yeah, I definitely will. I need to turn on the light. Or right, let's go to the nicer camera. Here we go. Aren't you going to work for me if I get really close? Kind of 
Come on. There you go. You can kind of see it. Let's see. Box for one day I'll perfect this camera thing. No, I think that just made it worse. Okay, stay like that. No, see, you didn't stay like that. To put against the table so there's no background. No, it, oh, there we go. Okay, just hold steady. So. That looks pretty drastic on the video. Hmm. If only there were a way. Hmm. Well, essentially you get the idea, but it's a lot more faded than that in real life. Let's see if it kind of blends more when I'm not just focusing on the sword. Well, we'll still work at it, but here is kind of the progress that I've made on this model. And you can see just the fading inside the robe, and with the mask, the different colors, trying to keep the his right arm a different hue of green than the rest of his cloak, try to break up the dynamic of this model, make it more interesting. It's kind of the idea of if you have a whole picture and everything is taking place at the top left corner and then you have something little at the bottom right corner you know 90 percent of the time pe people aren't they're not going to focus at all at that bottom right corner because there's just a lot going at the top left it's more interesting to the eyes it's more interesting to the subconscious um, and so you, you need to break up your model a little bit more to where you know if you have all the detail in the base or if you have all the detail in the in the you know the main body of your mini and then you just have a normal sword or you know i guess not just a normal sword but in this case a sword because it's on the very outskirts of the model uh, no one's going to look at it, it it's going to be essentially vis invisible you know unless people are really looking over your model on the table that's not what's going to attract the eye so you kind of want to break up the uh the detail all around your model uh but don't not making every little part of your model detailed or then in the famous words of syndrome if everything is detailed then nothing is detailed i don't necessarily agree with that but i love misquoting that as much as possible so well we'll do a little face reveal there we go well hello hello Hope you guys are having a good night. Thanks for joining tonight. Um, I'm sorry that the airbrush didn't work and that we had, you know, underprepared materials for painting my mini and just not a whole lot of time. But thanks for joining tonight. Uh, keep on sending in questions and also talking to each other on the community. I love seeing you guys talk to each other and uh, figure things out and share with each other your models and progress. Um, remember, finished is better than perfect and it's about what you like it's not about you know what you see on the box paint the model the way you want it and if it looks good to you it looks good to you so thanks for joining in tonight hope you guys have a good rest of your day